Here we are asked to use a 10 milliamp, 10 ohm uh, moving call meter movement to create a voltmeter. Now let's talk a minute uh, about the meter movement itself. Generally what we have is a permanent magnet and inside that permanent magnet we have a mounted coil of wire. Attached to the coil of wire is a needle and usually a graduated scale of some sort as part of the movement as well. Now we will run a current through the coil of wire. It becomes an electromagnet. The flux that it produces interacts with the flux of the permanent magnet to produce a repulsion force which is proportional to the current in the coil. The amount of repulsion can be measured using the graduated coil and the meter. We can graduate the scale in voltage, current, or with an appropriate design we can produce an ohmmeter as well. Now, what we use as a meter movement uh, is generally a coil of wire wrapped around an iron core, and that makes it into an electromagnet. The symbol that we use is a circle in which we place a graduated scale and a needle, and that represents the meter movement. Its characteristics are the current which causes full-scale deflection and the resistance of the wire used to make the the meter movement itself. Now in this one we have 10 milliamps as a I full scale and 10 ohms as the resistance of the movement. Now in order for us to make that into a voltmeter we have to make it capable of producing across it a voltage bigger than the voltage across the movement itself. Now, if we think about this question, the voltage across the meter movement will be equal to the product of the full scale current times its resistance. And we have 10 milliamps times 10 ohms. Now, if we write the current as 0 0.01 amps and multiply that by 10, we get 0 0.1 volts. Okay, so the rules of series circuits tells us that resistors in series will add voltage. Now, in this question, we want the voltage across the circuit to be a maximum of 125 volts, which occurs when the full value of 10 milliamps flows through the movement and, of course, the circuit. So, in order for us to increase the voltage from 0.1 volts all the way to 125 volts, a resistor must go in series with the movement. So, we'll show the movement, and in series with it, we place a resistor. This resistor is called a multiplier resistor because it multiplies the amount of voltage that will be produced across the circuit. Remember the characteristics of the movement are 10 milliamps provides full scale and so that will occur when the 125 volts is being measured and also 10 ohms. Okay. Now, in the circuit, if we have a current of 10 milliamps, that will produce a voltage drop across the movement of 0 0.1 volts. The rest of the voltage will appear across the multiplier resistor. And Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the voltage drop across the movement plus the voltage drop across the multiplier resistor will be equal to the total voltage of the circuit. So then the 125 volts 
the 125 volts will be equal to the sum of the 0 0.1 volts plus the voltage drop across the multiplier resistor. Now, there means that the voltage drop across the multiplier resistor will be equal to 125 volts subtract 0 0.1 volts or 124.9 volts. So, if we think about the circuit we've drawn, that means that 0.1 volts across the movement added to 124.9 volts across the multiplier resistor gives us a total voltage across the meter of 125 volts and this occurs for maximum current 10 milliamps. So with respect to the multiplier resistor itself what we'll find is that the current 10 milliamps along with the voltage across it put in Ohm's law will give us the value of the resistor. From Ohm's law then the multiplier resistor will have a value equal to the voltage across it divided by the current through it. And we can say 124.9 volts divided by 0 0.01 amps or 12,490 ohms. That means that the multiplier resistor will be equal to 12.49 K ohms or 12,490 ohms.